بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In this short session, we will cover, إن شاء الله, the lab number seven, which is going to be about data definition language and data manipulation language (DML). We already covered them a multiple time before, uh, but we will have more one example in this lab as well. Again, what we will need, we will need the uh, lab instructions, which I'll upload for you on Blackboard. Also, the MySQL program or workbench. On the left of the screen, I'm having the lab instructions. On the right, I'm having uh, MySQL workbench. I'll create a new MySQL page. And we will see the requirement or the procedures that we have to follow. And based on that, uh, we will follow accordingly. So again, the outcome is how to create or how to be familiar with DDL and also DML. What we will, what we will create is going to be about uh, a company again. So I'll call it company one, because I believe you, are, you already have a company database on your workbench. So we will create it as a company one. So those are not going to be duplicated or giving you any errors. So just again, I'm, I'm going to write, here is asks me to create a new database called company. So just create database, call it company one. So it's not going to be reflected with the previous one you created already. Then you know what we will have next, just use company one. And that's going to be the second, or this is all, is the answer for the first question. Second question, let's name it as two. It asks me to create a three tables, one of them called agent, the other customers, and the third one is orders. With the following columns, declare the corresponding primary and foreign keys. So here we have all of them, all the attributes or columns, if you would like to call them columns. And here are the table names. One hint that gives to us as well, it's each order completed one customer and agent. So we can see the table order. It's actually a relation that connected both of the customer and the agent. So it's going to be a table in the middle. It's one of the approaches that we already covered in the lectures, and you already had a midterm exam about this part that was included with you in the midterm. So we will create that table, which is going to have two foreign keys that will be connected to those two tables, okay? Um, I already have the code for these three tables, so I'm going to just copy and paste, and then we will discuss it together. So we can see it on the, on the right. Here I'm just creating a table called agent. Uh, the agent first attribute is agent code with the bar chart 20 and its primary key. How do they know it's a primary key? Because it's obvious none of them is going to be a primary key except the agent code. Agent name, it's also a char with 40 characters. It's not accepting or doesn't accept no. Uh, then working area, char, uh, commission, it's a float, accepts no. Phone number is a char with the 10 characters and lastly country. Uh, with the customer again, we have the same things. So we have customer code, it's a primary key, customer name, country, and phone number. Lastly, you have the create table. Here it says you have to create it as order table. If you put order table, that's a reserved keyword in MySQL. It's 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 one of the keywords in, in SQL. So I just add underscore AC, which which refers to agent client or agent customer. So uh, to eliminate this error, I'm going to call, we have in there uh, four columns, order ID, it's a primary key, order amount, customer code and agent code. And you can know, obviously from these two or from the names, you can guess that it's the, the customer code is going to be a foreign key that's connected to the customer table. So we've done that here. Uh, do not forget on delete, on cascade for both. So cascade will be for both on delete and on update. 
uh, we put them as constraints. So first of all, I'm creating the constraint. So just put the name constraint or the keyword constraint. Then I'm going to give it a name, any name. So here it's called just cust ID. And then foreign key, I'm just going to put the foreign key that's inside my table, which is customer code references. It refers to customer, specifically customer code attribute. And the same thing with the agent. So let's run those as well. Oh, we have, yeah, we haven't run any of them. Those are old things that I run before. So I'll just highlight all of them and run. Not forget to refresh if you couldn't find the database here. So I'm just going to refresh. Now I can see it. it's company one with the three tables that I created. Let's jump now to the third question. That question asks for delete column working area from agent table. So we know how to delete. Now we're still in DML. So all of, uh, sorry, DDL, data definition language. So what I will do now, will just go and delete the working area column from agent table. So agent table, I'll delete working area. So ELTA table, I'll choose the table, which is called agent and then drop column, what's the column name? It's working area, semicolon. Highlight, execute, execute it correctly. So it's been deleted. Fourth question, insert a new two rows into agent table with the following values. So we already deleted the working area. So you will not find working area here. So the, the remaining attributes will be agent code, agent name, commission, phone number, and country. You just add them using insert. And this is one of the command or method for DML data manipulation language, let's say. So what I will do, I have the code for that here. So insert into agent values and I'm going to set both rows here. So just highlight and execute. Again, it asks me in question number five to add two rows in customer table. So have the same, I already have the code, which I'll share with you to, to test it out by yourself. Highlight, execute, and then it's executed. Okay, regarding the sixth as well. One thing about this sixth question is to add the new rows into the table orders. And it's quite, important now to focus about the foreign keys and primary key because you cannot add something in foreign key that does not exist in the primary key and we you already had exams on that before so here I focus on the for example the customer code c100 and c200 are customers that you have already so you can add them as again for the agent code you know that a003 a007 are both agent and they are existed on agent table so you can add them so as long as all of the rows are valid now we can add them i have the code for them as well so we have the sixth one just going to add or execute the code so it's cute it's cute executed now if i'm just going to check you can see here both of the uh Rows are there for agent regarding customers as well. And lastly, with order, you can find all of them have two rows. The seventh asks to add a new column email with the var chart 20 and null constraint to customer table. So we know how to do that using Elta. So Elta table. Which table it's custom, I believe. Yeah, here's just a mistake or typo. So you will just get to customer and then add. Column. Let's do the name of the column email and spot chart 20 and no. Execute. Yeah, and it's executed. 
So what do we have more? Um, we still now in DML, data manipulation language. So in question eight and nine, we will just do some changes on uh, seventh was DDL, but eight and nine, yeah, it's going to be DML. So eight to change for a customer number C100, the country to quit. So C100 is a customer and it's from KSA. Now we will change it to be Kuwait. So let's put eight. Now we'll use update. You know that already. So update customer. Where is the table? It's called customer. So then sets. And lastly, where? What we will change, we will change the country. So where is the country and the customer? It's here to be great. What's the condition? It's the customer code C100. So customer code equal C100. Semicolon. Executed and it's executed. Let's check it together. Go to uh, customer table, and you can see C100 is from Kuwait now. Uh, the number nine, it's a change for customer number C200. So update. Again, the changes is going to be on the uh, customer table. So customer set. What do we have to change to change the agent code? Oh, it's not till customer, I believe it's an order. Yeah, an order table. So let's go to order table, update order table. What do we have to set? Uh, we have to set the, um, the agent code. Where's agent? Yeah, agent code to be A003. Now, again, you have to check because you have a foreign key. Is A003 agent is available or is it, is it exist or does it exist on the customer table? Yes, we have. We have an agent, an agent called or agent called with A003. Now you can add it. Other than that, it will be an error. So I'll just put A03. That's the first thing. And also comma. We have another thing that we have to update is the amount. So uh, all the amount, it's going to be 20,000 or 2,000. So it's 20. What the condition in words would be uh, the client code or uh, yeah, the customer code C200. So customer code C200. Executed and it's executed. Next question that we have in this manual it's create a view containing a list of names of all customers whose agent is A003. So now we are interested in names and we, have, we are interested in which name we are interested in customer names whose agent code is A03. If we go to order, AC, we can see both customers are belong to A03 because we've changed, if you, if you remember in this last command, in command number nine, we changed the customer code uh, or change the customer agent to be also A03. So now both customers that we have belongs to agent A003. So we want to return the name of these two customers. But the thing is, if we go back, I can highlight using this, I believe, um, or without even highlighting, let me show you something. So it's, now we, we are, yeah, and you want the names of the customers whose agent code is a hundred zero or uh, A003. If we go to um, the orders table, now we can see that we have both these or both of these two columns or sorry uh, rows uh, belong to o or a003 right 
and we want to know the name of the customer. What we have here in order table, we, all, we only have the customer code, right? Which is C100 and C200. How do we know the customer name? We have to return back to the customer table. Inside the customer table, we can see the names of those two customers, okay? Again, in the last table, we can see the relation between the agent and the customer code. We know that the agent A003 serves both customers, C100 and C200, but now we don't know the names of those two customers. We just know the uh, code of them. It's just C100, C200. In order to know the names, we have to go back to the customer table to know the name of these two customers. So C100 is going to be Abdullah and C200 is going to be Ahmed. What we have to do, let me show you. First of all, we have to create a what? A view. So in order to create a view, we just put create, and we have done that before, and you give it in a name. Let's call it, for example, CC or customer names. Let's call maybe uh, agent, agent, yeah, agent 003. Let's say something like that. So we are looking for customer names that serves by agent 003. And then we will select what we want. So what we are looking for is the name of those two customers. From where we can get the name? Exactly, from the customer table, customer name. So it's customer name. From, we have two tables that we are looking for now. We have to first make sure that A003 serves the customer. And then we have to make sure that the customer code that we are have here, it's identical to the one that we're going to looking for in the customer table. So if it is C100, it must be a C100 to get his name. If it is C2000, it must be C again 2000 here to get his name. So we have two conditions and we have two tables. So the first table is going to be what? Customer. And the other table is going to be order AC. I'm just going there, giving them some aliases to be easier to call them. So I'll give that C. And that one is going to be O, for example, as an order. So now from now on, when I put C before the name, it's going to refer to the customer, or it's going to be referred to order AC. It's the aliases, if you remember, something Again, it's the same. You can have it with as or without. And now the customer name, I'll just put behind it C dot customer name. So from customer, get customer name. So that's what it means. Now I'll put the conditions that we've just talked about. So we want to make sure that the agent code in the order table. O dot agent code, where is it? Here, which is this one, equals to A003. And this is again what another condition that we just talked about. We want to make sure after we find that agent, we want we want to make sure that the the customer code that we found, it's identical to the customer uh, code that the customer table in order to return the name. So O dot, which is this one, customer code. The customer code that I, I get from, oh, can give, I can get it from here, from the customer code that I will have or I will get from all the AC, sorry for that. It's going to be equal the customer code that in customer table. Customer code. So if those of if both of them are equal, we know that it's the same customer. And please return for me uh, the uh, customer name. Here we have to put as I believe. Yeah, I forget about the as. And then semicolon. We just run the code. No errors. Now refresh to because I click on views, nothing. So I just click refresh. Now you can see you have one of them in view. You just show it, and you can see that both of the customers are here 
because if you return to order AC table, you can see both of those customers are served by A003. And these customers C100 and C200, if you go back to the customer, you will see their name Abdullah and Ahmed. So on views, you can see that, where is the views, yeah? So in views, you can see Abdullah and Ahmed, which is the column that you've chosen. This is basically about this uh, lab. Hopefully it's clear. I'll upload with you, uh, I'll upload as well the code. Test it out by yourself. It's important to test it, to try it out, to understand it. In case you have any question, ask me anytime. Uh, all the best and see you soon.